Let's continue creating our REST API and Node using TypeScript. And as before, let's start with some theory, just a tiny bit. And again, this is not precise. I won't be providing you with the exact meaning of every concept and every notion regarding REST API. It's just something to give you a base or a common understanding or just help you with your intuition about that. And as we progress with each episode, we will slowly improve that. I will be adding more and more of that so we can build your knowledge uh, step by step instead of like putting it on you all at once. Again, this is the REST API in layman's terms. And let's talk now about the concept, the notion of a resource. So resource is something which has um, a shape, which is the attributes, the fields, and data. It represents some collection of data. So you can think about it as an object in object-oriented programming. It's, it's not exact, it's just analogy. So don't take it too far. So it's a shape and data uh, together. If we want to group together people, we can use the, a resource called user because each person has a name, a first name, last name, and maybe age. And when we group those together, those attributes, this is the shape of our data. And then if we add new records, uh, each record representing a particular person, it creates a collection, and this is our resource. So shape and data. We can create other abstractions. For example, we can create a resource for events, for books. In this tutorial, I will be doing something a little bit controversial because I will be using the singular form for the name of resources. Attention. So it's user, event, book, movie, etc. It's not users, events, books. So this is inspired a little bit by the database story. I will put some links explaining all the nitty gritty details in the description of this video. But for now, just, just accept it. The reason is that it's just simpler this way. For all the years of programming, I realize that there are some of those small things that you have to always remember. And because in REST API, certain things are being used in singular form and other are used in plural form, sometimes there, is, there are some problems when you're thinking, should this be in plural or should it be singular, etc. Singular in all places, in URLs and database, etc. But we will explore it through this tutorial. So for now, just remember it's singular for the names of resources. To make it even more easier to remember, just think about a resource as a container of records. So it's a user container, even container. So you have this container and there is this label which says what kind of records it has. And now, if we are taking this analogy of object-oriented programming, in object-oriented programming, we have objects, and we can create objects, create instances, and we can, for our own objects, we can define methods. So we can name those methods the, the way we want. We can put any name, and then we can invoke uh, those methods. In REST APIs, it's slightly different because we have only a limited set of methods. And here I'm just enumerating four of them, the ones that are the most important for this tutorial, but there is more. So request is this message you are sending to a resource, the same way as the you are invoking a method on an object in object-oriented programming, but the name of a method is predefined. You cannot change it, you can only use those methods. And along with those methods, you can send some, send some data. If you are sending a POST method in your request to a resource, it means that you want to create a new record of that shape in that container. If you are using GET, it means that you want to retrieve a record of that resource. So it means that a record which is in this particular shape. If you, you are using the PATCH method, it means that you want to update a record and then delete to delete a record. So let's go again over this list. Note that I just uh, made the C bold. So it's C, create. 
get, it's retrieve or read, so error. Update is U and delete is D. So it's crude. The first letters of, this op of those operations constitute this acronym crude. Create, read, update and delete. And it's just a way of mapping the HTTP methods to the operations you will be doing in your resource. Because if you are creating a REST API, you want to manage the resources in a persistent way. You want those resources to live longer than your application. So it means you need to put them usually in a database or in a file, etc. So it's a persistent storage, a storage that exists beyond the lifetime of your application. And those methods, those names, represent the operations you want to do on your storage. So on your database or on your file. Those operations are then mapped to those HTTP methods that a resource can receive uh, through HTTP by sending a request. That's the theory. Let's see that in practice. So let's quickly create our first resource, a very basic one, and let's try to work with it. So as you remember, we had this uh, simple file which was generated by Hunswot uh, out of the box. Let's start the server so we can write Hunswot server or you can just write hc server, it's the same. So the server starts on the port 5544 and in the other window, so I have the server running here and in the other window I will invoke 5544. Let's again do hello. So it works, it returns the hello world message. Here in the server you can see that the server it's, it's aware of the re, uh, request you are sending. So it displays those requests. So for now, let's just remove that, all that, because we don't need this. We don't need that and we don't need that. And let's create our first route, a resource route, and let's call it event. And again, this will be request. And here we will be returning a response, so our uh, event. We put this under the get. So we want to reach to the event container and take one event. So which one? So we must identify that event. So let's do this by ID. So there is this way of passing the data through URL to your handler. So to this uh, block over here. And if you are using a column with a name, it means that you can put anything after the event for example, if I open the other window, I can write event, for example, polyconf, or I can write number or anything I want. And this part from the last slash to the end will be available as the ID parameter in this handler. So now how we can get this ID. So request has this uh, field called params. And params has this ID. So whenever we are specifying in the URL, will be automatically available in the params variable, which is uh, available for the request. So let's now see if it works. And let's return a record, which has the, the thing we passed in. So if I type, for example, one, I'm getting ID one. If I type uh, something else, I'm getting this value. So as you can see, it's available in this params variable. But th that's a little bit long to write. We are repeating it. So we can just use the structuring assignment here and we can just make it simpler like that. Or we could do the, the structuring in the parameter directly. So this way it's available and the handler and let's see if it still works. So let's write Zaiste and it works. So now we have this ID in our um, variable and we can use it to access our event, but we don't have events yet. So let's create this uh, event collection. And this will be array and let's give it a type. 
So for now, I will just do any because I don't want to complicate it too much with types. We will see that in the future episode. And let's do ID one name, let's say polyconf 2020. And let's uh, say location uh, Paris. So we have one event and we would like to now use the ID we received from the URL. So usually we will just say event one to retrieve that object. Here we have the array, but we want to access it by ID. So we will have to go over this array and find the record which matches the ID. But that's not ideal. So let's first transform this collection into a hash so we can access it directly by ID. So let's create this by ID method. And this will return what we had in the record. And then we will just take the ID and assign it to our record. And here we will mark it as any. We will fix it later. Let's quickly create another variable called event repository. And this will be event collection. We will be reducing over the ID. So if you don't know what's happening here, uh, check out one of my previous windows about functional programming. But we are just transforming this array into a hash with the keys being the ID and the uh, values being the whole object. Here I need to just change the order. So by ID is first and then the, the object. Here in the OK, I can remove that part and I can just say event repository and I can use the brackets like with a regular hash or regular object in JavaScript and I can pass directly the ID. So this will find the proper object. So let's add another one. Let's say two and this will be, for example, strange loop, so St. Louis. Just note that I didn't have to restart my server. It's still running and automatically reloading changes. You don't have to worry about that and configure that. And it, it's all TypeScript. So now I will be invoking event one. It returns the proper value, the proper data. Let's see two. It's strange loop, St. Louis. Let's do three. It returns OK, which is wrong, but it didn't find the record because we don't handle that yet. But we will do that in the next episode. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.